bringing them together. Yes, thank you, uh, Asif. And let me summarize perhaps what I what I see as priorities in answering the question how to ensure support for anti-poverty policies and how to build coalitions that can ensure that these policies have um, wide enough support across across different parts of society. I think we face two challenges. One is that anti-poverty policies are all too often described as welfare policies, benefiting people in poverty alone, not society as a whole, and not even the middle class. Um, and that is, to a large extent, the result of an approach to poverty that I would describe as compensatory. In other terms, we create exclusion by the markets, and then we compensate for this by progressive taxation schemes and social policies that have redistributive impacts. But that is then perceived as taking wealth from those who make wealth uh, to transfer it to, to, to others who um, um, uh, deserve some form of charity. And, and, and that is, I think, deeply problematic. It, it um, leads to anti-poor policies or anti-poverty policies being sometimes very unpopular and the target of populist demagogues. The second challenge we face is that the discourse about poverty um, is, is often about people in poverty being responsible for their own condition. Um, uh, they are poorly qualified, they fail to seize opportunities, they make the wrong choices in life, and as a result, yes, they should be ashamed of being poor, they should be responsabilized, and by responsabilizing them, we actually de-responsabilize society. So to answer this, we need, I believe, a different discourse about equality, about poverty, and about social protection. We should have a discourse about equality that emphasizes that it is in the interest of all that we have more equal and cohesive societies. And the work done by Kate Pickett and Richard Wilkinson, for example, on this topic is, I think, extremely important, as is the work of the equality trusts that they've set up in the UK. We need on poverty a different discourse that sees it as a failure, not of the individual person, but as the failure of society. It is, after all, the price we pay for our collective failure to build truly inclusive societies. And as regards social protection, it should not be described as a potential disincentive to work, um, but rather as an obstacle to people investing in human capital, to people taking risks. Um, social protection, after all, should be described as an insurance mechanism that allows all people to better plan their lives, to invest in education and to um, uh, invest in the future um, by being protected from shocks. And so if we take seriously this new discourse about equality, poverty and social protection, it leads to, in fact, a new approach to how to combat poverty that I'd like to summarize in five sentences. One, it's an approach to combating poverty that looks at pre-market exclusion rather than post-market compensation. And pre-market inclusion means ensuring that the economy is inclusive, that um, we provide, indeed, um, loans uh, to, to, to people who need uh, some credit to start uh, um, some, some small business. It, it, it leads to question how the markets can be more inclusive in area of people in poverty that uh, cannot be um, infinitely um, compensated for uh, because of the exclusion that they are affected by. Secondly, um, we need to link the post-market compensations to um, the pre-market strategies for economic inclusion. And that is exactly what BRAC actually achieves with its ultra-poor graduation initiative. Thirdly, we need to move to universal approaches to social protection rather than targeted approaches because universal approaches um, are much more likely to be supported by the middle class since also the middle class will see that it has an interest in supporting such universal um, uh, schemes in the areas of social security, of education, housing, um, healthcare, and so forth. Fourthly, we need, and I very well, much welcome the comments by Paul O'Brien in this regard, we need rights-based social protection policies, describing them not as charity that society provides to individuals in need, but as rights that empower people who can claim these benefits before independent bodies. Fifth and finally, we need these social protection schemes to be participatory, 
the more you involve people in designing them, in assessing them, in implementing them, the more you create expectations and you shield programs from shifting political majorities by having a large range of people involved in developing these programs. So this would be my, my answer to the question of how to build support for, um, and so for poor, poor policies and how to ensure that they are resilient in time. So, so fantastic way to frame it. And I think Lindsay,